You know, some things just take you straight back to your youth. It might be a song. It might be a particular food. My own special Proustian Madeleine arrived today. It's a vintage classics airfix kit, the SRN1 Hovercraft. Let's see what you get inside the box together, right here, on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel, welcome back if you've been here before. Indeed today I am looking inside the box of the SRN1 Hovercraft in 170 second scale from Airfix. It's a vintage classics release, first made in 1959. Now if you enjoy the show, and I hope you do, please do remember, give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future videos, including the build video of this kit. Now, if you'd like to make a more concrete contribution to the channel, you can do that through Super Thanks, by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online partner programs. Now, one of these is the Airfix affiliate program. If you follow the link in the information box below, click on that, go to the Airfix online store and buy anything from there then at no extra cost to you, Airfix will make a donation to the running of this channel. And you can still use your 10% discount if you're an Airfix Club member, and you can still collect your Hornby Hobby Points. Indeed, I purchased this kit using my Hobby Points. It only cost me the price of postage. So, let's make a start then and have a look inside the box of the SRN1 Hovercraft in 170 second scale from Airfix. So here it is, the box of the SRN1 Hovercraft, a vintage classic, classic Roy Cross artwork on the front here, showing it piling ashore off the water. Um, as you can see, it says vintage classic release. Here it is, 172nd scale, and the product code is A02007V. V in is the way they say vintage classic. Beautiful artwork. Anyway, um, on the side here, there is the fact that the mold tools were made in 1959. This pack illustration was done by Rory Cross, as he said, 1965. Enjoy the nostalgia with Airfix Vintage Classics. I hope I will. There's some brief information there about the SRM1. There's a sort of side drawing, color schemes, and so on and so forth, as it appeared in 1959. The kit is 135 millimeters long. It has a width of 105 millimeters, and there are 46 pieces included. Over here, we have the color callouts for the schemes. We have here the fact it's a skill level one, so you should be able to make this no matter how many kits you may or may not even have made in the future. If you're buying this just to make as your first kit back after a long time, you remember this from the good old days, you should be able to do it. It also comes with one flying hour token. Now, flying hours, if you're a member of the AFX Club, you can use to collect these and buy a free kit later on. Or if you're not in the AFX Club, or indeed if you are in the AFX Club and you don't bother collecting them, then you might want to consider sending them to Models for Heroes. A link to this very, very excellent charity is in the information box below. That's the box. Let's see what you get inside for your money. And there we go. There is inside the traditional plastic bag full of grey plastic. There's, you can see straight away, the two big biggest parts of it. It tells you how big the kit is. And there's some frames in there of other bits and pieces. There is also in there a separate plastic bag with some clear parts. We'll have a look at all of that in a little while. There is the instruction sheet. Again, we'll have a look at that in a bit. And there's the decal sheet, new decal sheet. We'll have a look again in a while. First of all, this is the 
base of the hovercraft um, it has been molded onto a frame because you can see because there's a bit where the frame joined there which fortunately is relatively proud so it should be straightforward enough to take off likewise the top plates here there's two frame attachments here yeah they should be okay just to sand off um, take off and sand off there um, essentially they, these just sort of clip together at some point and um, yeah the rest of it gets built around that essentially there, there's your hovercraft hovering frames there are some frames as well there's um, some extra bits and pieces here this is a part of the rear skirt area I guess the fins the um, flow distributor the wheels are here another frame here with the uh, inlet here the inlet fan or the main fan um, another part of a distributor channel um, the crew seats are here as well and I guess part of the cockpit there another part of the rear skirt area um, that's the inlet uh, the distribution bell on the inside of the inlet the fan sits on here and that sort of distributes the air to all the rest of the inside of the hovercraft um, again another distribution part here and uh, I guess these are control control fans control louvers so you open or close to let air out to sort of turn the hovercraft around and there's the main bell of the intake here really nicely modeled actually molded the primary fan this is the primary fan more um, ducting work and the crew we have crew then in another bag we have the windshield from the canopy area as well the pilots look fairly rudimentary i would query the need for oxygen masks um, when this thing flies at about you know 30 centimeters off the ground um, i don't know whether they would have had oxygen masks i don't think they would have done i think that's very strange i wonder if i might be able to find a different uh, different crew but i guess if, it, if you come with a bone dome you're going to have a, an oxygen mask and yes yeah, it's, it's got the microphone in it and whatever the um fan yeah looks fine i would have expected a bit more modeling on the um on the blades if we did it today these blades would probably look quite different but you know 1959 that's not bad the molds are standing up very well i don't know how much repair work they did on the molds but this surface is really nice maybe they repolished some of the molds because that that's a very very nice surface finish for the 1950s i keep saying for the 1950s like it's a bad thing but you know we all know that there was some pretty ropey stuff made in the 1950s um there's tiny little bits of flash here and there but nothing overly worrying um that could just be injection issues or you know just very old tired molds and I'd much rather there be just a touch of flash than a bit of undershot, to be fair. The plastic is the current sort of darker grey brown plastic rather than any of the older plastics that were used as well. And you see flash most on this frame um, where the wheels are. You can see there's some flash here and on the uh, feed here as well but again it's nothing major these bits here have got a little, some flash around them but they're going to be easy enough to clean up it's not terrible by any means it's it's very very cleanable look like hammers actually don't they, they look like hammers. i wonder if they are little hammers for something maybe fire exit hammers or something i don't know the actual principal um, deck as it were um, it's not that these are raised um, panel lines by the way this is what they look like this is the, the, the top surface had these strengthening ribs all the way around it 
Um, a lot of it was section partition sectioned as well, but it was um, it, it stood proud like that on the original machine. Um, the molds look clean enough, sharp, well finished. Um, the have taken off a lot of the a lot of the uh, ejector pin marks. I mean, they haven't ground them down like they normally would on, on some kits, but you know, not that prominent. And again, little bits of flash around the edges here, but nothing too much to worry about. Likewise, on the bottom plate, uh, the moulding's absolutely fine. Not a problem at all with this. All looks very clean and all looks very good. There is just the one transparent part in this kit, the windshield and side windows. Um, it is going to be basic. I guess it will be fun to mask these off because I'm pretty sure there's not going to be an aftermarket SRN1 mask set available with internal and external masks. So we'll just um, do a basic external mask, I think, for this. The decal sheet. Again, it's a new decal sheet. They all, always are with the Vintage Classics releases, newly done by Cartograph. Colours, as such as they are, look fine to me. The yellow looks rich. The blue is a nice pale, sort of slightly violety blue, as it was in real life. The blacks look very nice and crisp. All of these um, black and white squared off things, those are like, datum marks that go on various bits for uh, data recording when you're filming. So they will look nice and sharp as well. Not that much to do, so hopefully not much to do on the actual kit either. Again, if we look at the uh, markings, this is our standard scale, if you like, our, our standard ruler of a half millimeter propelling pencil lead. And you can see that the symbols here are really nice and crisp absolutely pin sharp no problems at all with any of that the instruction sheet interestingly i mean i can see why they wouldn't because it would cost a lot of money to do it but interestingly they only have the introduction here in english and normally on an airfix kit you would have um, a description of well, it ever it is, in this case, the hovercraft, and some basic stats about it here. And it would be in English and German and French and Spanish and Swedish. But here it's just in English and there's a lot of blank paper because it would cost money, presumably, to get a technical translator to do that. Assembly instructions, again, these are basic instructions. These are used on all sorts of kits, so they are easily transferable across different kits that would be a standard page as indeed will be the assembly icons here some of them might be slightly different but you know that they're, they're all in a book they're all in a standard way of doing things in a library as it were so that's cool then the instructions themselves which are for a kit of this age actually quite extensive um quite step by step these you know fx used to Sometimes just to basically just do an exploded diagram and then a load of explanation with this is a lot more, you know, do this, then do this, then do this. Then, you know, it's, it's kind of a lot easier to understand. That said, there's not an awful lot to it. I mean, there's what, 40 something parts, as we said. Um, so there's not an awful lot to worry about. Um, you'll notice that the pilots, pilot and co-pilot, because they are called pilots on hovercraft. You know, if you go on a hovercraft, you don't go on a voyage, you go on a flight. It is, you know, deemed to be air in the air. Um, the crew figures here don't have oxygen masks on, unlike the ones on the actual frame. So um, I don't actually know what I'm going to do about that. I'm, I'm certain you wouldn't. You might have had like a throat mic on for communication. I don't see that you'd have had an oxygen mask for any reason whatsoever. But um, maybe those are just standard figures. I mean, they must have come from the 1959 mold. Um, yeah, so that, that's the whole thing. You can see these markings here, these uh, datum markings are the ones that are on the 
um, decals that get folded over these bits. I'll see how that goes. I might paint them instead of that, but we'll see if we can get them to sit nicely as decals. And that is the instruction sheet done. There it is then, very much of its age in terms of the layout molds and stuff like that. But you know what? It's not too bad looking. I think it will make a nice kit. If you'd like to see how it turns out, keep an eye out for the build video. Best way to know when it's around is to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell. Then you'll be notified of everything I publish in the future. And of course, if you like anything you see on my channel, please give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. Thank you so very much for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Take very good care and goodbye.